Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the breakout command found within an Autodesk Inventor drawing file. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this, made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out my other videos in my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, so here we are in our drawing file. And the first thing we need to do to work with the breakout command is we need to create a base view. So what I'll do is I'll go to the base view command here in the create portion of the ribbon. And I'll go ahead and select this assembly I went ahead and uh, prepared ahead of time. So in this particular case, we have an electrical enclosure with a printed circuit board assembly on the inside. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a breakout view so we can see the USB connectors that are mounted to the board itself without having to create a custom view representation to achieve this. So what we'll do is go ahead and drop a couple of base views here. So we'll just create some projections. All right, that looks good. And we'll go ahead and right click and hit OK. And then now let's go ahead and start setting up our breakout view. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a sketch in our view of interest in which we want to create the breakout in. So let's go ahead and start creating the sketch on this base view here by going to the top and going to the sketch tab, clicking on start sketch and then selecting the base view here, which is our view of interest. Once we do that, you can see we get our vertical and our horizontal axis that's overlaid on top of this view. That's just letting us know that we're currently sketching in this particular drawing view. This is really important because when you're creating a breakout, you wanna make sure that you're dropping the sketch on the correct view so that it can reference that geometry when you create the breakout. Okay, so, now let's go ahead and just create a rectangular shape. So I'm going to keep this pretty simple. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle that sort of comes out a little bit past the USB connector and um, just envelops the rest of the part here. So we'll go ahead and drop that there. All right, that looks good. We'll hit OK and finish sketch. So now we have this sketch that's kind of floating on top of the view. Don't worry, this will go away once we execute the breakout command. So now let's go back to our place views tab and now let's go to the modify section of the ribbon. So when we're in the modify section of the ribbon, we click on breakout. We select our view in which we wanna create this breakout on. So we'll select this uh, base view here in the middle. And once we do that, it automatically pre-selects that closed profile that we're using uh, for this breakout. So um, once we're here, we can actually redesignate a profile. So for whatever reason, if we have multiple sketches on the same view, we can come up here to the boundary section select this boundary profile selector. And as you can see here, it's currently active because there's a blue fill inside of the box. And then we can go ahead and designate the closed profile of interest. But like I said, since there's only the single closed profile within that drawing view, it will pre-select that for us when we hit breakout. Moving down, we have our depth section. And within this section, we can essentially set our start and end criteria for the breakout. Okay, so the overall depth in which this breakout is occurring within that drawing view of interest. Okay, so starting in the left side of this area, we have our selector. Okay, so this is our selection filter that corresponds to the variant of our depth selection within this drop down menu. Okay, and, and we'll step through each one of these options accordingly, but we'll start with the from point option. And then of course, below it, you have your parameter field. So this is where we would enter a depth value, for example, for the from point option. And we'll look at that when the time comes. So starting with from point, you can use this in a couple different ways. One way you can use this is that we can activate the selection filter, and then we can go ahead and click on just anything that occurs on this particular side of the drawing view. Okay, so if we're looking at the front of the enclosure as we are in this view, and we select this edge, for example, we can set a depth um, to go beyond or behind that edge in which we create that breakout from. So as you can see here, I have a number two entered into this box, okay, that corresponds to two inches because my default units I'm working with are in inches. Okay, so with that entered and we click okay, as you can see there, it cuts into the enclosure, but we can't really see the depth from this view. So let's go ahead and project an isometric view off of this broken out uh, base view. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull this up to the top right hand corner. And there we go. 
Now we have our isometric view that's projected off of this base view with the breakout, okay? And as you can see here, we've cut into our part. And if you imagine, if we're looking at this front side of the enclosure like we are in this view, and we just use that rectangular shape and then cut into the part with it, this is exactly what we would see. However, we're losing the two USB connectors that we want to see within this particular projection. So what we can do is we can go over to our model browser and I'm just going to expand the dropdown for the actual assembly itself. So this is all of the model data for the assembly. And I'll go down to the printed circuit board assembly section in the model browser. I'll right click on that and go to section participation and set that to none. Okay, so essentially that is overriding that breakout for this particular part on its own. Okay, so the printed circuit board assembly will remain intact while everything else will take on that breakout. So this is exactly what we want. Um, however, I do notice that there are a couple of fasteners that are still showing, or at least this one here in the corner. So let's get rid of that. So let's find out which one that is. So when I hover over this one here in the model browser, this one is uh, lighting up red in the base view. So that's the one I want to Hide. So I'll right click on that, go to section participation and go to section this time. And when I do that, it will section out that fastener so that I don't see it. Now let's go ahead and go back into the breakout that we just created. And instead of undoing this operation and redoing it over and over again, we'll just edit the various parameters in the original breakout so that you can see the before and after much quicker. So to do that, we'll go into the model browser and just double click on breakout. You can also right click and then go to edit breakout as well. But I use just like to double click on this and then as you can see here we're back in our breakout command window now let's go ahead and set this depth value to something smaller i'll go ahead and set this to half an inch and then we'll click ok and as you can see there the depth decreases to half an inch okay so it um, just recedes a little bit and it's measured off of that front edge now going back into breakout once again let's go ahead and try something different so we'll set this to zero and i'll use this selection filter to pick up a different entity in a view that's not the base view in which this breakout is occurring so this is a really powerful tool because we can actually reference various geometry and um, use those as endpoints for the depth okay so for example let's say we wanted to go right up until this edge here that goes just beyond this usb connector i can left click on that edge and you can see there it's highlighted in light blue meaning that it will go up to that point and i have a zero here so there's a zero offset okay so now let's go ahead and click okay and as you can see there that uh, breakout goes right up until the edge that i selected now let's say for example, you wanna continue referencing that edge, but you want to apply an offset in addition to that reference. So all you have to do is go back into the breakout command window and then type in an offset value. So let's say for example, we wanna go an eighth of an inch off of that edge. I'll type in 0.125 and then click okay. And as you can see, I get that offset from the original edge that was selected. Now let's go ahead and start taking a look at the to sketch option found within the depth section. To utilize this option, the first thing we need to do is we need to have a sketch in place to reference as a stopping point for the breakout. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go up to the sketch tab, start sketch, and then we'll go ahead and click on this view. Now that we've clicked on that view, let's go ahead and create this sketch. So I'll use the line tool and I'll just create a vertical line that coincides with this uh, line between the top cover and the bottom cover. Okay, so I'll just pull this out this way and that looks good. And we'll just draw this all the way over to this area just past the USB connector because I still wanna be able to see this connector in my view once I create the breakout. So I'll drop that there and then I'll create another vertical line that just stems directly off of that and we'll finish the sketch. So now that we have our sketch in place, let's go ahead and go back to our breakout and we'll set this to, to sketch and then we'll designate that sketch. Okay, so once we clicked on that sketch, we can click okay. And as you can see here, I've cut through my top cover, but I've preserved the detail of the bottom cover. We're back in our breakout command window. So let's go ahead and take a look at the two hole option. So simply put, all this does is it references a whole feature in your model to act as a stopping point for the breakout. We'll make sure our selection filter is active and it is because there's a blue fill inside of that box. So let's go ahead and select our whole feature of interest. So let's go ahead and pick up this hole here on the side of the enclosure. And when I left click on that, you'll notice that we can click OK now. So we'll go ahead and click OK. 
And as you can see there, the breakout stops at the holes center line. So let's go ahead and try that again with a different one. So we'll go back into breakout, go to to hole, and let's select this back one here. So when we select the hole in the back of the enclosure and click OK, as you can see there, that breakout goes until the center point of this particular hole feature. Next, we have our through part option. So the through part option allows us to select individual components or parts within our assembly to create the breakout with. So for example, let's say we want to cut only through the top part of this enclosure, but leave the bottom cover intact. All we have to do is make sure our selection filter is active and then select the part that you want to create the breakout with. So in this case, I want to only remove material from the top cover. So I select the top cover and click OK. And when I do that, as you can see there, that rectangular profile cuts all the way through my top cover, but everything else is preserved. You can also select multiple components with the through part option. So let's try that. So this time we'll select the top cover and the bottom cover and we'll click OK. And as you can see there, the entire top cover in this rectangular region that was drawn here in that sketch has been removed in addition to that bottom cover. OK, so let's see it from another angle. OK, so we don't have any more of that bottom cover in that space. Next, we have our show hidden edges option found within the display section. So simply put, when this is active, we can see all of the hidden lines within our view that we're creating the breakout with. So let's say, for example, we wanted to reference a whole feature from this view without actually needing to access it in this view above. So let's say we wanted to access this hole here. So I can just go ahead and hover over that whole feature here, left click with the two hole option selected, and then I can click OK. And then as you can see there, we use the hidden edges option to locate a feature that was used as a reference point to set the depth of the breakout. Now, the final option found within our breakout command window is the section all parts option. So when we activate this option and click OK, it will override any section participation settings we've previously set in the model browser. So as you may recall, earlier in the video, I set my printed circuit board assembly to none within the section participation section. OK, so essentially what that was doing was regardless of what my breakout was doing, it was preserving the printed circuit board assembly. So as you can see there, it's only cutting away the top cover and the bottom cover, and it's leaving the printed circuit board assembly right where it is. However, when I go into my breakout command and I use the section all parts option, it overrides that setting and it sections it anyways. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Drawing Creation Module, where I gave you an overview of the breakout command. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.